Well, you talk about friendships, you, you certainly lost, and you still have no friendship with the bloke who was a close mate, do you, Andrew Simons? No, I haven't spoken to Andrew for a long time. That's extremely disappointing. It's and... childish, isn't it? I mean, isn't it? One of the things that, I don't mean you personally, but one of the things that's always respected about sport, and it happens around uh, body contact sports, in particular AFL football, yeah. there's a problem, you go toe-to-toe -to -toe and you're sort down. It well, might even get was, physical. That was I'm the a, way, yeah, that was the way, well, look at what happened with, with Caddo and I. Simon to Cat me, Jim. that's why, again, that's an example where that happened eight years ago. I was over that. This the, I should day explain. An incident, after incident in the rooms after a test where he's grabbed you by the throat, hasn't he? Yeah, it? we had a disagreement, um, and to me it was done and dusted there. But eight years on, we're still talking about it. Uh, every day I, I do an interview, and it's in the newspaper still. So but can't you uh, just old ring school, up? that was the way I was brought up, that you would. You'd have a disagreement, you'd front each other, you'd sort it out, and then yeah. you'd go to the bar and have a drink. Those times have changed. So you, do you want to make up a friendship with Andrew Simon? Oh, I would love to catch up with him. I, I went out of my way on a number of times. I flew to Brisbane to see him. Um, yeah, I would love for that friendship to, to go back to how it was. This um, is a bloke who it should be sick of, was, was too drunk to play on the one match day. And you tried to cover up for him. Like you weren't captain. Yeah, when I was, yeah, well, I, I think, I, I feel um, through my career, I, I tried my absolute best to, to look after him as a friend. Uh, and then, like I say, when I become a leader in the group, I become vice captain. Um, I had to make some tough decisions that were in the betterment of the team. And unfortunately, that affected Andrew and our friendship. Mm. Is it worth it? I mean, you've got obviously some of your ex teammates having a go at you. Now, how serious it is and how much it's media was talk, I don't know. Captaining Australia worth it or writing the book worth it? Well, captain of Australia and losing 100%, friendships. One hundred percent. Because so it's I, worth shedding mates to be captain of Australia. Well, like I said, I, I, we've we've heard from probably four or five players that I mightn't have the great greatest relationship with now. But I reckon I played with close to one hundred players for Australia. So I reckon there might be you know ninety other players, ninety five other players that might come out and say, well, you know, Michael's leadership actually helped my game improve my game and I do still have a great relationship with him you know I, I, I know the the newspapers in particular won't go and speak to you know Gilchrist, Warren, McGrath, Gillespie, Langer you know these guys that I'm still in regular contact with um, let alone the guys that I then took over the captaincy from and captain but what about yeah, Ricky, it, Ricky Ponting? He's an enigmatic sort of bloke, and I, and I know you've got enormous respect for him. You describe yeah. that in the book, but you also say he wanted a yes man as vice captain. He well, wanted you to just agree with him. Well, I didn't feel I I didn't th feel I was a good vice captain to Ricky because I didn't feel I could be completely open and honest with him without a f you know. Um, hurting his feelings or him thinking that I wanted to take over the captaincy or wanted to be the captain. So I always felt like if I if I said the wrong thing, I was going to tread on Ricky's toes. And, um, you know, for me, I thought Adam Gilchrist was an amazing vice captain and did such a good job because he was never, there was never any threat that Adam was going to take over Ricky's job as captain. Yet, as soon as, you know, I started playing cricket for Australia, the, the media build up uh, in particular was that I was going to be the next captain. So I always felt that in the back of Ricky's mind um, was that I was going to take his job. And, and that was certainly something I was never, never chasing. I never dreamt of captaining Australia that, you know, that happened and I'm grateful that it did, but it was, it wouldn't have changed my life whether I was captain or not. Uh, we'll take a break and come back and wrap up. But Shane Warne, who at times is a great friend of this program and at times a sworn enemy of the program, which, um, you make the point you think he was 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 one of the the best captains never to captain Australia. I mean, he stood in a few games. He was never appointed captain. Was that the politics too? Was that because Warney was too much of a rat bag at times? Oh, I think I believe the only reason Warney didn't captain Australia was because of what was happening off the field. I think everybody um, in the cricket community, let alone his teammates, knew how. Uh, how smart he was in yeah. regards to the game. You can hear that in his commentary, can't oh, you? He, he, he yeah. was, he, what I loved most about Warney was he saw things before they happened. Uh, tactically, I thought he, he was very aggressive when I played under him at Hampshire and he was always looking to take the game forward. So I think he would have, I think the public would have been entertained by his captaincy style. Um, but his knowledge on the game was something that not a lot of people had. Has he grown up yet? <laughs> Warney will always be Warney, but he's a great man. <laughs>